So how good is the new box, really? Spiky bits. <laughs> Welcome back, hobby maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com, and uh, in this video, we're gonna take a look at the new Eldritch Omens box. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna put the models together. I think we can magnetize a lot of them uh, to future-proof your minis as well. Look at the values of the box and just kind of see where it goes from there because I don't exactly know what to expect, but I do know that it's a $200 box. So let's look at the values or estimated value uh, for this particular product right now. Jumping over to spikybits.com. Uh, we're taking a look at the values now, of course. Uh, we've got all the sprue pictures, we've seen all this stuff, but this is more what we're interested in. So I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. This is a $200 box set. Uh, the values are on par with the last two 40K box sets, Hexfire and Shadow Throne, which were both $170. So the value is pretty much the same. It's just arbitrarily 30 bucks more from all of the parent purposes. Now we know that GW's done a price hike. We know that the new, if you, when the stores go to restock this box, if it's even available, it will be $10 more for a price of $210. So you can't necessarily make the argument that the extra $30 that from 170 to 200 is in fact because of the price increase because they've actually added to that. What a lot of people have said, what I hypothesize is the fact that they put a lot of new miniatures in here and they're kind of paywalling it a bit um, to kind of, you know, pr protect protect their margins, whatever they do when it comes to uh, completely uh, completely new miniatures all in one box, which we really haven't seen since Indominus box set. And those are all multi-part mini 61, in fact, whereas this is 16, the literal inverse of that. Um, so it's, it's really interesting value proposition. And I think going forward, don't get me wrong, inflation's a thing. Charging more for things is a thing. People getting paid for their, you know, their time a lot more these days um, is a thing. So I can see why there, why there would be price increases and I'm not exactly mad about that. I think GW's gonna have to pivot and offer more value um, and stop their incessant FOMO and their incessant paywalling of new products. But the problem is, and I've talked about this in the past, so we're not gonna spend that much more time on it, is that everything is in a pipeline, an 18 to 24 month pipeline with Games Workshop. So we're not gonna see any big changes until, you know, 2023, 2024, unfortunately. So hopefully they get a handle on things and they turn it around and they make these boxes a little bit better of value, maybe monetarily, maybe on the contents that come inside. I don't know, but they need to figure it out because you can go to any game store. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen it, but the, the shelves are stocked with all the Battle Forces still, the Black Templar boxes, the Dominion boxes, the Fury boxes, the War Cries, the Blood Bowls. It's all stacking up. People are not buying these boxes. And I'm hearing it from all of our retail contacts all over the globe. It's not just the states. I got an email today from Element Games saying they're discounting up to 30%. You know, a lot of the Blood Bowl, a lot of the Necromunda stuff. So, you know, it's it's out there and it's a thing. But let's talk about these values here. So most likely the Autark is going to be a $35 kit. Um, it does come on the bigger sprue that we've seen already. So I'm not sure how they're going to package that when we saw the Space Marine clam packs last week. They're super small and they came with a little hook to go up on uh, store shelves. The Rangers are 55 are probably going to be $55 based on the Drukari or the um, uh, the Incubi and the Howling Banshees. Shroud Runners, probably 60 comparable to Space Marine Outriders bikes. I would imagine that puts the Eldar value inside the box around 150 bucks. Warsmith, 35 to 40. Chaos Chosen, it's five models. It could be 55. It's probably gonna be closer to 60 with the price increases. Forge Fiend, we already know is 75. I haven't checked in on the price increase, so 170. Overall MSRP, uh, total estimated value inside of the box, $320. So in theory, again, $120 in value, same as Hexfire, roughly same, you know, same as Shadow Throne, but you've got 15 out of 16 new models. So is it worth it? Yeah, there's value in here, guys. You're gonna get new models early, um, but do you need those new models? We don't have the Eldar book. We do have the data sheets, which come in here and we've posted them up already on the site, so definitely look for that. Maybe I'll put some links in this video here. So at the end of the day, you just gotta vote with your hobby dollars. Is it a value in GW money? Yeah, absolutely. Is it a value in 2022 US dollar? That's for you to decide. 
<laughs> you can always get your hobbies for less from, from your local game store, hopefully, Dicehead.com, Amazon. Of course, you can find uh, people breaking apart these box sets on eBay. I'm not sure what the stuff's going for because it probably just hit over the weekend as I'm recording this because I buy this stuff from my local retailers wherever I can find them right off the shelf. I don't get it from GW because I'm sure you can see the difference between our unboxing and reviews of pretty much everything and everyone else's that gets it from Games Workshop. So let's jump into the box itself, take a closer look at the miniatures, the sprues, the instructions, see what we can build. I'm really anxious to try to magnetize some of the stuff because I think in 2022, the, the year of changing rules, it's very important to try to make these things as modular as possible. Now here's the box set. It's um it's a little thinner than than most of the sets we've seen out there, and I gotta admit it doesn't weigh as much, and it feels like the um the cardboard or the packaging is a little bit. It seems like they skimped on it a little bit. I'm gonna be honest with you. If you picked it, you're like I paid two hundred dollars for this, and you pick it up, and you're like, it's lighter than a cat. Like why is the box lighter than a cat? And I just spent two hundred dollars on it. So. But that being said, we're gonna open it up and it's got, you know, it's got all the stuff that they talked about in it. You've got all your sprues. We showed you all the sprues already, but we're gonna take a closer look at this. We don't care about the Forge Fiend because we've already showed you that in the past. Um, there is a whole bunch of stuff in here. So let's get it all out of the way and over to the table. Then you get the little, um, card uh inside card now a lot of times if these don't if these don't come damaged you can put this in 11 by 17 frame and you know kind of put it up in your studio or have it as a backdrop or something like that it's really neat little art that's kind of cool that they do that but really what this is for is to uh to help protect the material behind here the booklets and the things like that from the sprues itself because we saw in the past you know sometimes the books and things would come damaged so once you do that and i can already tell here they did not give us Wait, do we have the bases? Okay, we do have the appropriate bases in here. Um, the, the I've seen one box already that didn't come with the 27 millimeter bases or 28 millimeter bases for the Eldar guys, but this one appears to have it. Okay, so then we've got all the like, transfer sheets, the new Eldari. I don't want to say it's new, but it might be. I don't. I can't tell you the last time I opened an Eldar kit, but there it is right there. So that's really cool. And then you've got the expansion or the campaign book here, which has all the data sheets in it. And the cool thing about this data sheet book, which we've of course already seen it because everybody leaks everything as soon as they get it these days. Um, this has crusade rules in it. So it's got some crusade rules, it's got some data sheet rules, uh, and then it's got the all the stuff for chaos, but the chaos rules are all the stuff from 8th edition. So nothing new in here, everything's got the wrong number of wounds, etc. So really the only thing that matters is these data sheets here. But keep in mind, the same thing from the Indominus box with all the new marine stuff, those data sheets were actually redone in the Space Marine Codex. So even though we're seeing this now, there's no guarantee that these will be the actual Eldar rules when they come out. I imagine they are because, you know, how often do they do redo Eldar? Not very often. And then we've got the instructions which I think is where our path will lead us next. I always like spending a lot of time on the instructions because this is gonna tell you like a lot of things about the kit, like how you can make it modular, if there are any choke points, any, any problem areas. And that's super important. So it looks like the new Warpsmith is basically similar build to a Primaris uh, Tech Marine, although he doesn't have the separate greaves on the front here, but he's got that computer slicing to make him more dynamic and more uh, 3D kind of uh, poseable and a look to him with a different foot here. Now, I don't like how these just, these don't, these little mechantendrite arms don't seem to really sock it in here very well. And it doesn't look like you'll be able to magnetize the ends of his axe haft uh either thunder hammer or, or axe you're gonna have to kind of pick his arms do look like they are magnetizable but there's no other options so why why bother at that point he does have two different heads there which is really cool and then you've got the back assembly here that looks to have a lot of small and fiddly parts so i'd be super careful there as best you can and then that goes right onto the back here to this area so no need to magnetize that either all in all, it doesn't look like, oh, this is something here. Okay, so you have to glue this end on here and it has a tiny little fiddly part right there. That's interesting. Uh, shoulder pads are gonna be pretty standard. You can glue those on or you can use, you know, whichever ones you want. Everybody's got extra chaos shoulder pads, which may actually help us here in this next step. So looking at the chosen, there's gonna be a chosen champion. And then it gets into the four bodies here, which I'm sure we're gonna have options for here in a second. So just glancing at this, it looks like the chosen 
uh, champion is going to have two different weapon end uh, hands that you can put onto his arm or a mace. And I like this mace look here. That's pretty cool. And then we've got this axe or the chain sword. Now the chain or power axe or a chain sword. Um, and I think all these guys have bolters. So he has a bolter that he can put in his arm here. So you could, in theory, just magnetize the arm and glue that on there. Because I think all the Chosen have a bolter and then they have the option, and I'd have to look at the instructions here, but have the option for the, the hand weapon as well. So I think they come stock with the bolter. Um, putting this stuff together, the actual rest of the models, doesn't seem too bad. I do like the fact that you don't have to put the fronts of the legs on separate, the greaves like you do with the Primaris. But then they've got these uh, tabards, looks like two different tabards you can choose from. That's pretty cool. There are two different tops here, uh, three different heads for your champion. And then the cape goes on to, so you got this little sandwich here of a cape and then a backpack. And the design of the stuff really reminds me of the old Dark Vengeance box that came out in 2011. Uh, that had a really cool, or maybe it's 2012, I don't know. It's been like 10 years. And that had a really cool look to it and kind of changed the look to chaos um, a little bit more darker and sinister. And not just like some space rings with some random sh around their, their armor, like kind of like we had seen in the past. So once you get these four other bodies together, because remember it's a squad of five, then you have some choices. And it looks like you've got A and D can be a, a close combat weapon and a pistol of sorts. And then B and D can either be, so all of D can be built a certain way. It looks like you can have two ranged weapons. You can have one set of lightning claws times one. So one set of lightning claws for C. It doesn't look like they did that right. And then, hmm. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. So you've got bolters, and I think there's bolters on the backpack that sling onto the backpacks too. Yeah, there's those there. And then you've got chain sword options. So I guess depending on how you do this, now this is where I think it's gonna get interesting for magnetization. I don't think you magnetize the ends because I think this is that little split hands where they they notch it right they kind of do this little thing where um they take the hand and it's like a notch right and then this goes into here and this is the arm and or that's the hand to the gun and then that's the arm right there and that's how they do it and that's really hard to magnetize um and the wrists are, are, are really small so and there's too much weight on the front. So the magnet that you would use would probably, the, the front would fall off. So what I think is it's probably worth doing, it's very easy to magnetize these joints here with a 1 8 by 1 16th inch magnet. So I think that's probably your best bet is you lock in one of these. Now I know a chain ax and a chain sword is completely different, but I think you know, you're know you gonna have to make some sacrifices on what um, things you attach here. You, it looks like you're only gonna have, you have a bit that is already a power sword you have a bit that is already a power fist and then you've got three options here of either chain axes or chain swords whichever you want so you know we've seen in the past where gw makes the rules specifically fit to whatever's in the kit starting with death guard and i think that's a precedent that they're going to keep doing and you know the conspiracy theorist in me wants to say to kill the bits market because you know if everybody doesn't have to buy a, a chain cannon then they won't you know then they yeah some more money they'll spend at gw but gw doesn't want to put those four chain cannons for their havocs on the sprue uh that was a very hot touch button issue back in 2018 and i think that really led to a lot of people initially jumping on the board 3d printing bandwagon unfortunately um so, you know, we could talk for hours about uh, 3D printing and uh, the mistakes GW has made, but I think changing the rules to match the kits is a good stopgap. And plus also you don't buy this kit and then you're like, I don't have all the stuff I need. But the problem is that sometimes you do want to change the weapons. So what if, you know, the, a certain Legion has a benefit from the chain axes and you know, you want to play that, well then you just would swap out your arms in theory. So something to consider here of how you build this, but I think, and, and you're gonna have to, all four of these arms, you're gonna have to decide, like, do I want plasma pistols? Do I want bolt pistols? And it doesn't even look like they give you four plasma pistols or four bolt pistols or even four bolters to choose from. You're gonna have to just kind of pick and then magnetize those on, which could be a little frustrating, I suppose. Um, and then over here, you're gonna have three choices. You're gonna have to go with a chain weapon in general, I guess, times three. And then you're gonna have a power sword and a, and a power fist. Over here, you, it, you've only got the lightning guns, or excuse me, the lightning cannons, but it looks like you're gonna be able to magnetize two sets of arms here. And I think you could probably glue this to here 
um, if I was going to do this, which we're going to here in a minute, I would glue the arm to here and I would magnetize either both or just one of these arms. And that would definitely magnetize the combi bit. I have chosen, my arm where it's chosen, all of their combis are actually magnetized. So it's easy to do as long as you magnetize this point right here so this doesn't torque out or twist, right? You want it to just lock in and because of that notch, it'll lock in. So that's really cool. And then you put the shoulder pads on, put the backpack on, um, the only problem here is that if you make all of these, you're going to need extra shoulder pads to glue to them. And remember, like they show you here, the Legion clear pad is on this side and then the design pad is on this side. Um, that's just, you know, standard how they identify their legions or chapters for space marines. So keep that in mind. But if you're like me, everybody has extra chaos shoulder pads because every kit comes with extra ones. And then... From there, you can kind of decide where to glue these extra chain swords onto the backpacks. The same with the bolt guns, because, you know, if it's the lightning claw guy, maybe he still gets a bolt gun. I don't know. I don't know if we go by the rules that came in this or we just wait to see. But either way, you're probably going to want to have all these options for a bit to glue on later. I'm not going to talk about the forge theme because we already put that guy together like eight years ago. Uh, let's jump into the new Eldar real quick. Woo! So Eldar, okay, well, Eldar, a lot of people are, are really excited about Eldar because he's basically the first new models overall, I guess, since, you know, the, the 90s. Of course, we saw some new stuff in 2019 um, with the Banshees and the Drakari and stuff like that, which looked really great. And it's really cool to kind of see they're continuing on that path. So first up is the Autark, um, and you can make it as a male or a female, or you can have all sorts of different weapon options and things, and a, a different back a back banner or a warp jump generator, which is really cool. So that being said, as far as modularity, I think there's a little bit of play here. I think we might be able to magnetize these bits here. Uh, this looks together, it looks like this goes together pretty straightforward and can definitely drill since you're putting this cape on. Looks like we'll be able to drill into this somewhat and put a little magnet now. Whereas I think we're going to use 1 8th by 1 16th in magnets for the chaos stuff. I would imagine we'll have to use 1 16th by 1 32nd magnets for the Eldar, especially right here on these areas. The only thing I'm concerned about is the fact that you're going to have to pick where you want to put the shimmer shield, which weapon. So I don't know. That's going to be a tough one, of course. You know, that's going to be one of those things where maybe you just want to blue tack it on. Or maybe, you know, it's just a piece of war gear that you don't literally don't show to people. I don't know. Either way, uh, that being said, I think this is going to be relatively easy. The only thing is you're going to have to kind of pick one of these heads to put on it and then glue it down. Uh, so got some options there, which is really neat. And then when it comes to the Rangers, it looks like there is Rangers. It looks like there's some options as far as the hoodie heads. Unfortunately, one, two, three. Looks like there's only three. Yeah, that's unfortunate. The hoodie heads look way cooler, I feel like. Um, so front and back halves looks like they clasp into the legs to give it that three-dimensional kind of look. And then you've got an, a separate arm. Uh, or it looks like you can use a pistol arm. Is this the guy that holds? Oh no, he has some binox. So you got the uh, sniper rifle up there. It looks like you got two different options here as far as this guy goes, which is, it looks like a bunch of them have the different options. You can give them the little um, knife, combat knife or a pistol it looks like, and you can have the ranger rifle holstered. Oh wait, there is more. Okay, cool. That's wait, is it the, no, it's the same numbers. Dang it. Oh well. Uh, then this one here is doing stuff and you can have two different. I'm not sure if this is the war gear. I haven't looked yet. So it looks like there's an optional piece here. I don't know if I'd put that on. I think just having these little uh, little UFO kind of looking thing, drony kind of controller things or whatever those are. Or maybe that maybe you do need that because that is a drone. Okay, that makes sense. Same. Wait, hold up. E2, E3, E6, so, so there isn't an E6 here. Oh, all right, well maybe there is enough hoodie heads because here's an E6 and E9 and we hadn't seen those heads before. I would not think that these are specific to a pose. It looks like they have the same rounded bottom, so I'm not too worried about that. And then it looks like here he's looking, using the scope to look, because everybody knows you don't look down the barrel of your scope at things you're not about to shoot, right? Am I right? I think that's a gun safety 101. I don't know. Uh, so that makes sense. And then just looking at this, I don't see any other real gotchas here. Ooh, what is this? He's drawing his pistol. Has a pistol. Drawing a pistol. He's going going full pistol you never go full pistol he has a range rifle on his back and then this one here is that a 
Oh, so he can be striding with the rifle and have the empty... Is that the empty? I guess that's the empty. Yeah, that's the empty. Empty holster. Or he's pulling for his sidearm. So that's kind of cool. Very dynamic look to it. And then the, the new Shroud Runner jet bikes. Brand new unit never seen before. Although we had seen these exact jet bikes before many, many years ago. They made a mistake. They put these out on a table at a Forge World or one of the Warhammer Opens. These are exact ones we've seen. Of course, they used a very similar design for the Reaver jet bikes on the Dark Eldar, but this is the exact ones. I'll have to dig out that picture. Um, either way, they go together very similar to the Dark Eldar Reaver jet bikes. Uh, looks like they have the control stuff up here, the little foot pedals, the thruster, and then the intake, which I assume is an intake, and then you've got the separate, um, we'll just call it front, front airframe. And then you got the little spines and the weapons that go underneath it. Of course, we definitely know there's some shiny spears coming out, which are going to be very exciting to uh, get and look at as well. So this is what I'm concerned about here. It looks like these legs go on to the, the, shooter, the gunner, we'll call them. And then you glue it down. Now, I don't recommend gluing this down. Use a little bit of blue tack, and I got uh, or fun tack or whatever it is in your local country. This is called Loctite fun tack, um, just so you can come back and paint it, and it won't be a pain in the rump, right? But this, I don't like this. I don't like all these little warnings here. I don't like the fact that they have this foot pedal highlighted. So I'm almost wondering if they designed this to actually glue down first. That is not a good idea. The Custody jet bikes were like that, and there was no way you're going to paint those. You know those those capes and things and this is very similar because they have a cape um don't glue this down it, it will be a nightmare for you so i'm not sure how we're going to make this happen um this looks like it is designed to actually glue onto here and then you glue the torso on so i'm wondering if there's a tolerance issue here if so we're going to have to figure a way around that because that is going to be a pain in the ass to you don't want to glue these guys down and paint around them. That's just that's just going to be a lot more work. You're already painting one model, two model, three models. This isn't this is way more time than it looks. I assure you. Once you get started painting it, uh, and then the arms go on here. It looks like they're just open hands, so that'll be good. And then you have a choice of you know some different poses and things up here, which is pretty standard. And I'm not worried about any of that. And I like how all that looks. I'm more worried about how these guys glue. And it looks like all of them have that design here. Um, that is that is worrisome to me. So. I think that was the last thing in here. Let's take a quick look at the sprues and then get a build in. All right, so here's the Autark. Everything looks uh, pretty fresh on here. Notice the size of the sprue, so that's probably most likely going to come in a box. So I hope that doesn't mean a $45 price tag. Uh, hopefully that sticks, you know, around the 35 or whatever the, the new equivalent will be in uh, price increase dollars. So uh, it doesn't look like the, f the flash or the mold lines are that bad either. So really, really hopeful for that. And you can see the little nubs where the shimmer shield bit is going to go. And then the option of the, the back uh, two different parts right there. Uh, next up, let's see. Let's just do... Here's the Rangers. Rangers! So we've got the three sections of bits here. And they are not identical. Nope, they're not identical. Uh, so it looks like it's, it's not too bad here. I mean front and back kind of halves just like we saw There's no nubs or holes or anything like that So it looks like it might they might rank or they might uh, assemble together pretty good And then there's the bit for the uh, champion Nice crisp lots of areas here for you can do some like leather work or some camouflage work and stuff like that Which I think is pretty nice And got some areas there the little uh what is that, the hunter or something? I forget. The hunter bit. Uh, I did, actually didn't look. So there's three hoodie heads, four or five hoodie heads. So it looks like there's enough hoodie heads on here uh, that if you don't want to paint anything else and just want to have that cool little ninja kind of look, um, then yeah, I think that would be the way to go. And then when it comes to the Shroud Runner jet bikes, here's that spruce, a nice big, is it only two? It is only two. So nice big chonky sprue right here. It's really surprising how much stuff you figure there's three bikes on here, two riders. Let me just make sure. Yeah, that's actually pretty cool that they fit all of that on here. I hope they didn't cut any corners on the design. Uh, something I'm just noticing though, I don't know if that's the back. Where are those little front fairings go? I'm worried about, yeah, see, look at that. Like I just noticed that, like that's a really small little part. Um, I think they do go on the 
I don't know. I'm a little, I think that might be a little dangerous. It doesn't seem like there's, yeah, that's not very deep at all. So I'm worried about that. But overall, it, I mean, they fit this much stuff into here. So that's really cool to see, like on a design philosophy. Good for them. Uh, and then the same thing with the Chosen. You got all these Chosen on the sprue. There's five of them. And lots of different options. We saw there was a ton of heads, uh, 11 different shoulder pads, and lots of you know, arm weapon shoulder pads. We'll find out more about, and it looks like some of these are already pre-drilled out, so that'll make it easy uh, to put some magnets in the, the sockets there. And then last but certainly not least, the Warpsmith is also on this larger size sprue, so he will probably most likely come in a box as well. Uh, looks like the arms are protected pretty well, which is cool. It's definitely on point with that old fine cast one they put out many years ago, uh, which just basically came with this. So it's cool to see this little like turbo driven looking uh, Thunder Hammer too, which I think is pretty neat. And he's got two different head options. So let's get to the build in and tell you what we think. Well, I think we're going to start with the bad. Um, I want to. I was. I was a little worried about this when we were just kind of looking at it, and it's. It's. It's a lot worse than I thought. So these are really cool looking. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a great idea. But this. This model right here is a trap, y'all. You got to be super careful with this one. So first of all, you can see where I've already broken off uh, this little front fairing thing here because the little nub to hold this in is not big enough. It's just not because you're gonna. It, it's gonna fall off of this thing no matter what, how hard you try because it actually doesn't sock it in as well as GW likes uh, for you to think. So I would I'd definitely recommend magnetizing this. Uh, Magnet Baron sells these things with the little toppers and I think it might be um, really worth it to do that because the very first time this is gonna fall off, this is gonna, sh is gonna fall, is gonna literally explode into the air and fly across the room and end up on your couch. Ask me how I know. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a bad design. I'm not happy with it. These little kickstands, we'll call them on the back, are cool looking, but the same thing. If you drop it hard enough, those are gonna, or if it just falls off the stand, I don't wanna say drop it. If you drop your minis, they're gonna break. Okay, we'll just we'll just, we'll just go with that. We'll just accept that as, as a truth. Um, the back guy, you can put together, no problem. And then you're just gonna wanna use a little bit of blue tack to lock him into there. Um, and that's good because, you know, you can just pop them on, pop them off when you're ready to paint, go, go crazy, go wild. You are going to have to put the driver on first. And let me show you a little bit about this driver. See that gap right there? You're going to have to put a little gap on it. Um, and maybe use some plastic putty to fill it in so it isn't so noticeable. But I mean, it's on the bottom of him. So who cares when you go to paint them? Uh, you just, you're just you going to notice nubs and you're going to notice things on here because we just didn't spend the time to clean it up. This is more about a function and, and the gotchas to build this so you're, you don't spend ridiculous amounts of time. Uh, this is probably the worst construction model kit we've put together since the um, silent one for Necrons, which literally took way too long. I, I wanna say nine hours to assemble that. It was ridiculous. Uh, it was not designed well, and these are also not designed well. There is no reason why these legs should not be designed so you can just pop this dude on and off the bike and use the, um, the little kickstand leg pegs and the arms uh, hands right here just to lock them in until you're ready to paint them. And then you just, you know, blue tack them off and then paint them up, glue them back down and you're good to go. I would definitely not recommend trying to paint this with these guys glued on. That's just, it's already a lot to paint and that would just be a little too much personally. But everything else goes together as far as that goes. You just have to be very careful with this driver. Um, and also, let me lock him in there. And with also, He's not going to fit on 100% flush till you actually glue him down. Just like they say, you got to glue the feet and you got to glue um, his crotchal area in there as well. But just be super careful because the very first time this thing falls off a stand, it will probably shatter that little winglet there. Um, it took so long to put this together that we only put one of these together. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's a little, there's, it's a little rough. It's a little rough. I won't lie. I was, um, it's difficult. So let's talk about the Autark though, because the Autark's really cool. Got a few options here. Let me grab them. Get get my get my hot little hands here. So here's the Autark, and completely magnetized, except for the head, because the head, you know, you can you can try a bunch of different heads. I just kind of blue tacked them on here to get to get the style, to get the style and look. But what's cool is you can indeed magnetize this back here. Just using a 1 16th by 1 32nd magnet. Shabam. Uh, same with these joints. 1 32nd 
Actually, no. I uh, used a 1 8 by 1 16th inch magnet because there was enough room to drill it into here. So this is more powerful. The smaller magnet, the 1 16th by 1 32nd, boom. Same with this arm, boom. So then you can kind of future proof your Autark. Um, you might have to glue on the head, kind of pick that one, but you know, whatever. They always look a little different. It even works with the warp jump generator. That locks in there. Very, very cool. You can switch out the weapon, get the chain sword here with the little curl at the end. Boom, there it is. So you don't need too much work. Just uh, I have three different drill bits all set up. One with a 1 16th inch uh, drill bit, one with a 1 8th drill bit. And then I think I have one in between because the bolter, the end of a bolter size is a little bit in between these there uh, as well. And it gives you a little bit of fun. You know, you can, while you're playing, you can be like, shoo, 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 and do all that sort of thing. So here's, we'll give you all the little options here. There's that one. And then I guess you can just leave this on there as well. So you got that. And then you've got this one here. Gives you a cool little look. And I think I ran out of guns. Nope, shirky, shirky. Pistol, cannon, bang. So yeah, goes together really cool. And they, they stay right on. This uh, can definitely have some fun. So that's a neat little kit. Definitely uh, no gotchas there. Very easy to put together. Let's take a look at the Rangers. Rangers! I don't know why I keep saying that. I can't help it. Please forgive me. Um, so, like I said, they have a bunch of different options here. Um, the shirkin pistol or the cool little, like, I didn't start it, but I'm going to finish it uh, weapon there. And then he's got the uh, uh, long gun on the back. Or the, I don't, I don't know what that is. Oh, I guess it's the holster. So maybe that one shouldn't have a holster if he doesn't have the long gun in it. Either way. Um, so they're really cool. They, they go together well. You can kind of see the nubs. Oh, actually, no, let's talk about that. They don't go together quite well. So you have to be careful here when you're cutting these out because the, the sprue where it contacts the frame or where the part contacts the frame is in the most obnoxious of spots. So right here, you can kind of see that. So you might want to use some of the super thin, oh, I don't have it here, but the super thin uh, Tamiya glue uh, to kind of seal that up or just use a little bit of plastic putty to get in there and kind of uh, fill it together because these ones, it, it's not on the shroud runners, it's only on these ones. So just be super careful with that when you're clipping it off. You wanna make sure you get everything uh, trimmed away nice and flush uh, for you. And then there's this guy, he's got his little uh, drone, droney, droney dude getting ready to go go to go to the sky and find some bad guys. Random walker and uh, at the ready kind of uh, look there, which is really, really cool. Uh, also some of the capes, you're gonna wanna use that super thin glue to kind of get in there. And then once it dries, like you can see here, it's dry, but you can tell there's a gap. Well, you just need a little bit of, uh, uh, you can either scrape it with your, your scraping tool or a little bit of super high grit or super low, low number, but high grit. Nope, that's the other way around. Either way, <laughs> uh, very fine sandpaper will get in there, or you can get those sandpaper sticks, which are really fun too. I love those things. Um, those are definitely worth using, and there's some, some ones specifically made for modeling. So the Warpsmith is, is a very dynamic model, but that being said, you have to be very careful assembling it because these um, tentacles here are very fiddly and they don't exactly fit together quite the way they say on the instructions, unfortunately. There's a lot of gapping. So unless you're spending uh, probably a little too much time getting in there and trimming out, uh, making everything super flush right off the sprue, you're gonna have a few gapping issues. And when you go to kind of glue it down to the base, you can see here where there was an issue where it's slightly slanted. Um, this is blue tack and I, I blue tack the uh, the shoulder pads too. So don't worry about that it's, it's a little bit of a gap right there, but um, You know, don't forget the blank shoulder pad. Oh, I guess I put some on well I guess he's a warp smith so it doesn't matter, but either way um, blank blank one's supposed to go over here um, Chapter or uh, design one over here rather um, But he looks cool once you get it Just remember to hit all those little nubs in the things before you glue them on because it'll be difficult to uh, to kind of trim off and shave off there but other than that, you know, I think I think spending a lot of time on this guy will probably get you pretty far. Uh, we didn't have that kind of time to do to get to the recording and you can see this assembly, it's not the best, it's not the best, but you get an idea of how it goes together and how cool it really is. So, you know, just sit down, listen to a podcast, you know, put, put the time in on that that I think is definitely worth uh, doing because you want, you, you know, you want that guy to look good, right? Um, let me grab the rest of these 
other chaos bits here because this is gonna get a little wild. So you've got the four dude or the five dudes for the chosen, and they all look great and they're really cool and they're very very dynamic. Some of the most vi uh, dynamic uh, chaos duders we've seen in a while. This is the champion. And like I said, he's definitely got that uh, really cool looking backpack inspired by the uh, Dark Vengeance guy, you know, about 10 years ago. Now, just blue tack this one on because maybe you want to paint it separate, whatever. Um, it's not a big deal if you blue tack it on. As you can see, it stays on there. Um, the head, you know, I just blue tack that down just to give you an idea of the posing. Now, this is magnetized. 1 8th by 1 16th inch magnet. Again, very strong. It's going to hold the whole arm. This one is glued down because it basically gave you, doesn't really give you that many options for this guy on the instructions. So what's cool about it is as long as you keep your polarities the same, uh, you want to find a weapon that goes over here, you can. You can swap them out. Well, actually, I think that's the one that it comes with uh, to swap out. But there's a chain axe from the other guys too, if you really want to go with that. Like I said, there's one of the three and we went through and magnetized all of those as well as the left arm or the model's right arm. And this, oops, that one fell off. I'm gonna have to spend a minute gluing something real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, we took care of that. So this, this is the combi weapon here. So it's gonna consist of a left arm, a right arm, and the combi weapon, which there's four different bits there for that. So you're gonna, what you're gonna to wanna to do is glue this onto here, wherever it goes like that. And then you can magnetize either uh, both of these, or I'm thinking you just probably only have to do one because this here was basically that. So we just glued, magnetized that side there and Put that in there because you're going to need that for if you want to swap them for like close combat weapons but you don't necessarily need to magnetize that one as well and then you just drill a little uh, hole into here for that 1 16th by 1 32nd weapon or combi bit and because it's in that notch it's not going to torque or anything i mean granted don't drop your models and <laughs> but it hangs on there pretty good like you're not going to bump into it and it just fly, flies off or flops off or anything like that so i think that's a really good solution for that and then you know if you want to make them close combat weapon or something like that you can uh but remember you're going to need extra shoulder pads and everybody most cast players have them so i don't think it's going to be that much of an issue but you know some people might be like but i don't have any yeah, you can always pick some up on the secondary market and of course there's always a bid sellers out there and different things too so you can have some fun with the chosen um no matter which way you want to and i just blue tack these shoulder pads on because i wasn't sure the final build so to speak but yeah it's really cool um and then there's here's the other one so there's the other two ones that you can switch between power fist and bol uh, bolter uh, close combat weapon and then didn't glue anything down to the back yet but remember you've got those chain swords that glue on the back um and all of these guys you can swap it out depending on what you want to do something like that or something like this just have them walking up or i don't know something you can have them turning looking a different way about to hit somebody mr fister right there uh, and then there's the lightning claw guy, which looks really, really cool. And those also are magnetized. So it doesn't take too much time actually to do it. Um, I think we have a magnetization video out there, but uh, you know, for the, for the most part, you're just going to want to drill it and it's going to be about, about flush. Uh, so just drill it just a little bit past where flush is just to hold a little bit of the glue, put some glue in there, and then you're going to want to take a stack of the magnets, put them in, and you'll be able to see where the line is and then just kind of twist it until it grabs it. And then you know that it's uh, that it's locked in there and it's glued in there and you can just pull the, uh, the magnet stack back out. And that's the easiest way to do it. But maybe we'll do a tutorial on how to magnetize stuff because it really doesn't take that much longer. And I think in this day and age, it's better to feature-proof all your minis uh, than wanting to go back and have to repaint or rebuild uh, things out there. So, and I like to blue tech the helmets because it gives you an idea of the posing and things that you may not quite get until you uh, you know, play with them for a little bit and you're like, oh, okay, that's the pose I want. And then you just glue it down. So I think that was everything except for the forge fiend. But like I said, we did that one in the past. So overall, I think a lot of folks are happy that Chaos and Eldar uh, finally got those uh, new miniatures. And as you can see, you know, just be a little mindful when you're assembling those. Uh, but at the end of the day, 
it's all worth, you know, it's all about uh, voting with your hobby dollars out there. If this box is worth it to you, go ahead and pick it up. You can obviously get things for less. And we know there is a price increase coming. So maybe that's not a bad idea. Of course, you know, you can always get your stuff for less. Hopefully it's your local game store. Uh, but if not, there's always Dicehead.com, other online resellers, of course, Amazon, etc. But, you know, this stuff will be available separately. We know chaos is way, way down the road potentially summer like the rumors had said because we know tyranids are next so maybe there's not a hurry to get any of this chaos stuff and maybe you know the LR codex is probably on the way but when that is well i imagine it'll be the spring for sure so that's about it for this one thank you very much for watching our unbox and build and mild rants on uh the new eldritch omens uh chaos and eldar miniatures there uh before you head over to one of those retailers to lock yours in make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you'll be the very first to like and comment on all our videos if you liked that video feature consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just It's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikybits.